Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on determining the order of a reaction graphically. In the previous lesson, we learnt more about the rate constant. We also learned about the Arrhenius equation, how to rearrange it in order to find some unknown values. And we also looked at plotting a graph of the natural log over one over time, and we could use that and we could use the gradient of that graph to work out other unknown values as well. So we're going to continue looking at graphs in this particular section, but in order to identify the order of reaction. The order of reaction can be determined graphically. Remember, I said that you cannot work it out through using moles, stoichiometric ratios or anything. You need to do an experiment, plot the graph and have a look. And we're going to look at the different patterns that we're looking for for each of the different types of orders. So we've got here a concentration over time graph. You can see I've drawn three tangents. That would enable me to calculate the rate at those three different points. So the gradients of each of these tangents, as I just said, can be used to calculate the rate at a given point. So if we wanted to work out the initial rate, well, it's near to initial, it's not completely the initial. It's at this point, it's 10 seconds in, so I can't really call that initial, but at 10 seconds, what is the rate of the rea this reaction? I'm gonna do rise over run. So let's have a look at my rise. It's gone from 40 to 140 in terms of the concentration. So my rise is 100, moles per decimeter cubed, of course, over my run, and that has happened over 10, 20, 25, but this is a tangent, of course. So 100 divided by 25 tells me that my rate is four moles per decimeter cubed per second. We can do the same for B and for C. So let's quickly have a look at C. I mean, I can visually see that the gradient is a lot shallower here, so I'm expecting a lower number. Um, I've got my point here drawn and I'm going to calculate this. So I'm making it easy for myself. I have gone from 20 up to about, I might extrapolate backwards here just so I can see properly, um, 50. I'm doing this roughly, of course, in the exam, you'd be really, really careful with your ruler. So 20 to 50, so that's a rise of 30 and a run. Over what time period is that happening? Uh, well, 35 all the way over to 70, so 35. So 30 divided by 35, that's a significant change in rate. It's a significantly slower rate, 0 0.86 moles per decimeter cubed per second. Once we've got our experimental results, we can plot a graph. So initially, we'll probably plot a concentration versus time graph, but using those particular gradients, as I've shown you, as I showed you the previous slide, we can calculate the gradient at specific times and then plot that rate, the gradient, against the concentration. And that graph allows us to see the order with respect to the reactant being investigated. So here is a zero order rate versus concentration graph. We can see that concentration does not affect the rate. As the concentration increases on the x-axis, we get no change. The value for rate is exactly the same. So we're looking for a completely straight line in our con on our concentration versus time graph. And then we're looking for a horizontal line in our rate versus concentration graph. Here we've got two graphs showing what a first order reaction looks like with respect to the reactant being investigated. So we can see that rate increases proportionally with the concentration. So as we increase my x-axis, my y-axis increases at exactly the same. So we've got that dead, dead straight line. But in terms of the concentration versus time graph, how that's going to look is the curve with a decreasing gradient. So very steep at the start and decreasing in my concentration versus time graph. So a straight line through the origin, that's what we're looking for in terms of our rate versus concentration. That tells us it is first order. Here we've got a second order example. So rate increases with concentration, but it's not a horizontal line. It's not a dead straight line. It is a curve line like this. So the curve is produced with both. When you have a curve of both these types of graphs, you know it is second order. It's harder to identify between, to differentiate between first and second order when we look at concentration versus time. You need to plot a rate versus concentration graph to see it.